I'm Robbie McIntosh. I live in Cambridge, New York, which is northeast of Albany, near Bennington, Vermont. It's in the middle of dairy country. My friend Ed Green is here. He's, he lives down the road. He taught my kids in school, and he uh, was a gigging bass player um, back when I first started working on basses 28 years ago. And um, he's here to, to see what I'm up to today. A lot has happened since I, f I first started working on bases. Yeah, I love being here. There's always something in the shop that's being created or rescued. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of rescuing goes on here. Um, when, when my daughter was 14, she wished she could play the bass, and Ed said, Robbie, you're a cabinet maker. You could make her a bass. So I looked for an old bass, and a friend gave us an old bass and I restored it and in the process I met Lou DeLeon. Mm -hmm. Lou DeLeon, uh, master bass restorer down in Orange, Connecticut. Um, I needed his advice and so he, he showed me how to do a neck graft and when I brought it back to show him he said, oh, you should be doing this professionally, I'll teach you. And that was the greatest, the greatest gift I've ever received from anybody. He changed my life and um, set me on a course of uh, that I've just loved uh, to do. Fixing old stuff and and after a while I got I got the courage to make my own bases. And uh, a lot of what I've learned about making new bases is uh, gleaned from observing how the old masters built. And um, so I've taken a lot of lessons from those old makers from all over the world. Tell me about this beautiful baby you have on, well, on your workbench now. And baby is the right word. This is a half-size base. It's a copy of uh, a Burner Dell. It's a small half-size base. The string length is 36 and 3 quarters. It's a copy of one that I just restored last year. Um, and the thing sounded so great, uh, with more, more bottom and more volume than a lot of full size bases. I, I decided I would try and duplicate it. I had an old plank of bird's eye maple. So this is probably, it's 45 years at least, probably older because it was old when I, when I got it. And um, the top is red spruce, which is the native spruce. Some, some people call it Adirondack spruce. And that came from Bob Crosby over in Arlington, Vermont. The thing about an old base is that it's old wood and being old wood, it's it's acquired kind of a it's 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 all sort of used to being a base and <laughs> and uh, all the stresses are out of it and I think that's a big reason why old bases are sought after because the sound is just so much better. Uh, so I've I've always been on the lookout for old wood and uh, I found some old pine that came from a house in, in Greenwich, which is the next town over from Cambridge. My first base that I used that word for was in 2015. That won a Certificate of Merit for Tone at the ISB. The next base I made was in 2016, and that, uh, that earned a silver medal for Tone at the VSA. Well, I've got several bases in the Metropolitan Opera, and uh, a few in the Gothenburg Symphony. They're all over the country. There's one in uh, the Tasmanian Symphony. Most of those bases that I just mentioned are restored bases, and the, the, the newer ones are, are spread out all over. I have two instruments for sale, number 13 and number 14. We're looking at number 15 here. Mm -hmm. uh, number 13 is a copy of the Busan that Jeremy McCoy plays in the Metropolitan Opera. And that bass won a Certificate of Merit for Tone at the ISB in 2019. 
And uh, number 14 is a copy of the Montagnana, which is a, um, which ha is a famous vase. It's, it's on a, a poster that a lot of people own and uh, hang in their lockers. I think some of the most gratifying work I do is for the high school kids and the, and the local jazzers, who, um, especially the high school kids who are taking lessons on basses sometimes that are nearly impossible to play. And mm -hmm. I can dress the fingerboard, I can make them a new bridge, make them a new sound post, and transform the bass into something that they can actually practice on and develop some habits that they can use as a professional if, they, if they're heading in that direction. Extremely gratifying to resurrect an old bass that's been through the wars and has suffered all kinds of insults and injuries. Make it as good or better than new. And um, that's what I, that's the big thing that I learned from Lou. Yeah. Was you can, here, here's, here's this old bass old wood, modernize it with a, you know, do a neck graft if necessary, make it more playable, but you can, you can just bring it back to life better than before. Thank you so much for inviting me over today, Robbie. Pleasure. Thanks. Absolute Thanks. pleasure. Thanks for coming, Ed.